Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm Wolfsbane, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joe O'Gorman, playing Wrath of the Asimar, Pact of the Tome, Warlock of the Great Old One. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, Kelly and I post new videos on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. You can check all those out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. Of course, don't forget to take a look at the links below for our Teespring store, where we've got a couple new designs up this week. Take a look for Dusk Wardens and, of course... Uh, our ducks T-shirt as well. Of course, all your favorites are still up there. Ducks wardens. The ducks, <laughs> ducks wardens. Oh, new idea. Oh, mash new idea. New idea. Um, but or you can take a look at bit.ly slash dungeon dudes merch. And of course, the live stream campaign from Campaign One, Dungeons of Drakenheim, and this current season are also available now on Google Play, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Those go up every Friday on those platforms along with the youtube upload so be sure to check those out if you want to take drakenheim with you with that let us return to the shadows drakenheim is no more for 15 years we foolishly believed the madness and mayhem of that crumbling city was confined to the ruins we were wrong Insidious horrors have crept out of the shadow of Drakenheim into a world unprepared for such nightmares. Tales of strange magic, swirling haze, and unspeakable terrors echo through the villages and towns surrounding that accursed place. Now, the Dusk Wardens, a new band of heroes, are tasked with driving out the seeping tendrils of the spreading darkness before it takes root. Welcome back to the Shadows of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they had brought an end to the terror in Tierhaven, slaying the maddened and mutated form of Horus and his spawn and coming into contact with River of the Amethyst Academy, who has asked our three heroes if they would be willing to go out into other communities throughout Westamar, communities that cannot save themselves from the horror that struck Tierhaven. Agreeing to work alongside River and the Amethyst Academy as members of the newfound Dusk Wardens, our heroes are journeying out from the safe haven of Tierhaven into the nearby village of the nearby town of Schaffberg on their way to Ash Bay, far to the north of here. This first leg of their journey through Octonwald Forest will travel over 200 kilometers, in fact, to Schaffberg, hmm. um, and then uh, twice that from Schaffberg to Ash Bay as you head through Octonwald Forest and then along the wetlands that uh, um, that surround the mountains that border Illyria and Westamont. Setting out the first, th uh, the first few days of your journey are rather pleasant. The forest pathways are familiar um, and all of you have at least traveled out probably a few days from Tierhaven in the in recent months. The well, this pathway through Octonwald Forest is by no means a major road. It is a well-traveled one, pretty much the main route that anyone that is willing to travel right through the middle of Octonwald Forest itself 
takes, whereas the more main roads skirt along the outskirts of the forest, which really lies in the very heart of Westamar itself. Um, and so as you continue the journey, um, you are able to find several cottages, outlying farmsteads, and some of the smaller hunting villages and uh, agricultural communities that dot along this path. For the road itself, in certain areas, the forest is completely clear-cut and is used as agricultural land, sometimes logging camps and otherwise. So the first couple days of the journey go quite well. Asta. Yeah, r growing up, River used to have a dance. We called it River's Dance. It was a lot of stomping. <laughs> That's. Would you show me this dance? Uh, yes, once I have the proper footwear. Oh, excellent. <laughs> well, guys, it's been a pleasant few days. I've learned so much about you. All those conversations we had when nobody was listening. <laughs> we, we know everything. Now. I feel bonded with you. I, I have many bonds. <laughs> I still think he's weird. <laughs> yes, true. Bruce. He is a bit weird. We know their secrets now. What have you been feeding that cat? I haven't seen him eat much. Uh, it eats on its own. Bruce uh, feeds on the fears and insecurities of the creatures that he encounters. Um, his sustenance is uh, by that of uh, another plane of existence. See, it's when you say things like this that I get concerned. Uh, no, he's eating well. Yeah, I was going to say. He's, he's quite plump. Probably because of Wilhelm. <laughs> It's concerned about him, which leads oh, into yeah. the fear. And it's, it's the whole he's cycle. basically been snacking on you yeah. this whole time. Uh, <laughs> I, so I appreciate you. Am I in danger? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> well, <laughs> as you break away from that unsettling conversation and find yourself settling in uh, for another night, staying with Another one of Rudy's very distantly related cousins. <laughs> I have so many cousins. We just been scattered around the lands and don't always get a chance to connect, but every once in a while, you know, we like to see each other. And hospitality is key. Do you remember that one time that we had that family reunion at your place? <laughs> There's a reason we did it at my place. You know, acres of land. You need it when you're inviting, you know, all the Whitakers. <laughs> it was it was awful. <laughs> I don't do well with crowds that large. Your family is enough. The extended family, a bit much. We are rowdy some much. of the yeah. Some of the Whitakers uh, are pretty wild folk. They kind of treat everywhere we're like a bunch of animals. <laughs> <laughs> we do make our way around, you know, <laughs> like rabbits everywhere. I think only about fourteen of them were rabbits. <laughs> yeah. Rabbits and wolves and bears and you name it. It's a Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a Whitaker? There's like no. a deer going by. <laughs> That's a deer. I, ah, <laughs> yes. I knew that. I thought you'd learn to tell the difference between an animal and a shifter by now. Sometimes it's hard. Some of your family members shift pretty intensely. They really get deep and connected to their they're beastly sads, but you know it's all it's all well and good when when you're connecting to the spirits, you know. After about six days or so of travel along the muddy and rather desolate overall roads uh, between towns, you can certainly tell there's a there's a point as you move out of each of these smaller villages. Most of them are just thorps of maybe anywhere from a dozen to 50 families. And you can tell that very few of them leave much more than an hour to, to do's journey from the towns themselves. Because there are patches where the roads are almost completely ill-maintained and almost entirely overgrown. But um, given time, you're able to continue to find places to stay and a few families who will take you in it each night. So... There isn't uh, a single time where you actually have to camp yourself out outside o over overnight, um, and it is after about uh, set uh, the seventh 
day that you start to notice the forest uh, thinning out a little bit. And after about the eighth, the forest begins to break up into much more of a marshland and moors. Here, um, the there are many smaller creeks and rivers that are draining out, out from the forest itself. Um, and the larger kind of uh, pine trees and oak trees that make up much of Octomob Forest start to break up for smaller and young, uh, younger trees, many of which are starting to sink into areas of bog. And instead of just a dirt path through the forest, there are a log path that has been set across with a little bits of stonework here and there as you approach towards one of the more main roads. Um, finally, um, the marshlands and the rather uninhabited region breaks for what is a region of rather wet farmland. Um, and you start to see the recognize the signs of civilization, um, more farmsteads in the distance, overlooking the otherwise wet areas of, of land and opening up more into pasture and fields instead. Um, and it is early um, in the morning of the ninth day of traveling that you can see a cluster of buildings and trees becoming uh, visible ahead and the tall stone walls of a church of the sacred fire. You come approaching the small town of Schaffberg. Um, this is a small, uh, a rather large town of probably no more than uh, 900, maybe 1,000 people gathered along the main roads that lead from the large uh the large city of Leuchten, which is the most southwestern city of Westermar, and kind of wind this road which winds its way northward past Todsfeld and it towards Ash Bay itself. The, this is the uh, real point at which uh, this, this road is the dividing line um, north and south between the wetlands and Octonwald Forest itself. And with a several days' journey into the wetlands themselves, the Illyrian mountain range that separates Illyria and Westermar can eventually be, be visible. Um, this is the wet side of that mountain range because Illyria is known as rather arid uh, land on the other side of those, those mountains, but they are far off in the distance and cannot be seen from here. Um, a few days' journey is uh, Leuchten, um, the home of the duke who claims most of the jurisdiction over this area of Octonwald Forest. Um, competing, uh, Tierhaven is often alternatingly under the jurisdiction of Leuchten and Geldstadt, uh, two of the major cities in the southern parts of Westermar. Um, Rudy, it's probably been several years uh, since you've... Um, journeyed out to Schaffberg, perhaps? Maybe maybe no more than a year or so. Uh, it's been many years since the wars when you fought on the banner of the Duke of Lugden. It's been a while since I've been here. I don't like to travel too far outside. can't say I've actually ever been this far this way. I, I used to live um, out east, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it was east, and uh, th this is the furthest uh, west I've ever been. But, I mean, most towns have the same sort of idea, right? There's a church, there's an inn, there's a few houses and farmsteads, and uh, what was it we were coming here again for? It was uh, We're looking for Linus? So. Yes, uh, that is the contact uh, that River told us to meet. Wow. Well, if you want my advice, and I'm sure you do, <laughs> then I would say we go by rule number 44. Information is best gathered where locals gather, for common folk enjoy stories and gossip. If we're looking for somebody, the best place to check out would probably be the local tavern. Somebody there is sure to talk and know something. You uh, probably learned that dealing with Danforth back in Haven, didn't you? That 
is something that was passed down to me by my father. Mm. The local inn or tavern of any town is a great place to learn the ongoings in that town. A lot of people in those places like to talk and like to drink. And if you buy somebody enough drinks, they'll talk even more. I think it's a good idea. Start there and get some good grub ourselves. I could use some food. We've been eating nothing but what Wrath packed. <laughs> Schaffberg itself is built around a small lake from wi- uh, which collects the drainage from several of the creeks that wind through Ochtenwald Forest. The lake itself drains out into the wetlands and eventually connects back with the Dran River. Um, uh, a couple, uh, a, over 100 kilometers to the north. The whole town then is kind of built around this collecting lake upon which on the the banks of which where the lake empties into the its tributary river is built a large water wheel mill and lumber mill and on the northern side of the the lake is the church of the um of the sacred fire overlooking the town and then on the opposite sides there are are collections of buildings houses and homes Rudy, you recall from the last time you passed through here that there were um, a few inns in town. There's a lot of trade that goes between Leuchten, Toddsfeld, and upwards to Ash Bay. Um, And so there's a few inns in town and a few more tap houses and public houses as well. Um, You seem to remember having uh, fond memories of staying at a place called the Shining Shovel. Um, But uh, there's also been a place that was either like the goose and goblet or the goose and goblin or something along those lines. Um, and something that was al- along the lines of like uh, the way wagon or something wagon, something wheel. You can't fully recall the names of all these places, but you kind of remember what their signs look like. The only one worth remembering around here was the, uh, the shining shovel. Something, something about wagon, something about goose and goblin. All I know is that shining shovel great service. This place has three inns? I guess they are on a major trade route. It makes sense. Uh, Lots of traffic coming through. They gotta, you know, house people along their journeys. Makes sense. That works well for us. We will remain inconspicuous. They won't be unfamiliar with uh, travelers stopping by then. I mean, maybe they haven't seen much that looks like (laughs) rap before, but... Do you, uh, do you think it would be wise for me to draw less attention to myself. We got nothing to hide right now, right? Although, we have nothing to hide, but we were told that we were going in search of more danger. True. It's best to be on guard. I don't know if you want to use your your magic to disguise yourself as someone (laughs) if you really want to lay low, but I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, Maybe make myself appear a little less magic-y. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to disguise self with just normal, like, run-of-the-mill adventurer. Like, like I, you could stab me as an NPC and you would have no idea. <laughs> like, I do not leave a lasting impact on you at all. <laughs> <laughs> the most nondescript adventurer in the world. Like, classic, just like a cloak. Um... Uh, just uh, like same height, like no hair, uh, eye patch. Um, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, just like regular looking. Like I, I kind of like put together a disguise from like the first five people I see and just kind of do a mishmash of them. Now, is Linus going to Linus is meant to know you from the Academy, right? <laughs> <laughs> We will find Linus. This might be uh, in vain. Maybe I'll I'll keep this in my back pocket. Uh, I'm gonna okay. just go as uh, as Rath. Like, as you change, I'm like, well, maybe. And I change into you. I change into Wilhelm, and then I change into Rudy. <laughs> and I'm just thinking out loud, and then I just change back into me. Okay, this will do fine. Um, <laughs> as you come along the road past several of the. Houses and outbuildings and the farms surrounding um, Schaffberg. Um, a few 
passing by several of the farm farmsteads, a not insignificant number of them are boarded up. And as you come to the first crossroads in town, where the Shining Shovel is located, you can see that not much remains of the Shining Shovel. Um, the roof has completely collapsed and caved in, and there's a bit of rubble lining, uh, lining around it. Uh, it, and actually some moss and growth already over the rubble and ruins. There's some char marks like there might have been a fire. And it doesn't look like anybody's... And there's no sign of any repair. One of the, the homes beside it is also damaged in this way. Um, but across from it... Um, and considering the state of repair, because directly across from it, uh, there's piles of fresh lumber under canvas in the carpenter shop directly across the street. And beside, you can hear the hammering of the blacksmith right beside the carpenter shop. Rudy, when was the last time you uh, went to this establishment? Um, not much more than over a year ago. It hasn't been that long. Well, looks like the goose one it is. This one's closed. <laughs> <laughs> the goose. Which is a shame. I wonder what happened here. Um, I approach the building and kind of peer into the rub rubble a little bit and I'm just looking to see if I can at a glance uh, decipher maybe any further information on how or when or how long ago this, this all took place yeah give me an investigation check no that wasn't very good seven the inside is wet and there's dripping water inside and several of the floorboards are cracked open. Um, there's no burning embers or anything remaining. So whatever burned this place down and destroyed it was a while ago. And there's no sign on, on the door. Uh -huh. No. Nope. I mean, what are they going to do? Hang a sign that says closed? It could if, be. I think, I think it's closed, Rudy. <laughs> Are you closed? I, I yell. I yell into the establishment. Are you inside? I'm, I'm at the, the, like, echo, the door. Uh, echoes wide, and um, the sound just emanates through through the building. Or well, what remains? Of rule it. number forty-four. We must go to where the locals gather, and it is not here. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll have to find a new place to uh, investigate. Well, you said there were two other locations here that uh, people gather in, so why don't we check them out? All right. Let, let's, I'll lead you to the, the closest one. Is the closest one the goose and goblin or the, the wheel? Uh, the next closest one... Um, the, the next closest one... Uh, down, uh, over a small uh, bridge and past the mill... Um, is the other one you can't you're pretty sure that's probably the the wagony sort of one it was beside the stables it's whatever its name was the 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 last place the the goblin and goblet or the goose and something is uh is on the more north uh north end of town um, before we go maybe i mean i can hear the carpenter and the blacksmith uh hear some hammer and maybe we can ask someone close by if they know what's going on uh, absolutely. I'm good at talking with blacksmiths, so uh, <laughs> let me go first. And I walk over to the blacksmith shop. Yeah. Um, it's very obvious to someone who's married to a blacksmith that this is a smithy, uh, but there's no sign um, uh, there's there's no sign otherwise outside. The, the forge and everything is under a canvas, and you can hear from the, 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 the thunderous of the, ha the hammers upon a piece of metal. Uh, looks like there is a, this giant of a man um, and his equally gigantic partner. Um, the two of them are working on what looks like it might be the blade of a shovel of some kind. And there's soot and smoke um, every, uh, all flowing ar around the, um, the... all through the building as, as they work. 
Smells like a uh, liquid iron <laughs> in the morning. Hello, gentlemen. Um, as you approach, um, he he looks up at you, and he's got this big overflowing uh, beard, so much so that the beard and his hair, his, his short hair, make his eyes look particularly beady. Um, and the, his forehead is really coming over his, his eyes themselves, and he furrows his brow as you approach. Roll me a d6. One. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, as you uh, uh, say say hello, he throws down the shovel he was working on, and he and he screams out at you. I ain't taking no more business. You get out of my shop before the wrath of the gods comes down upon you. You get out of here. I'm busy. You're a stranger. You don't welcome in this town. You get out of here. And he starts walking towards you, brandishing his hammer. Now, hold on there, mister. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a visitor in town. I'm from a close near, you know, town nearby. I mean no harm. Um, I put my hands on my rapier. He continues to walk to, towards you um, and he, he says you ain't getting out fast enough you go, go get out of here um, what will you do I'm gonna like keep my hands up I don't want to brandish my weapon but I'm just gonna like as quickly as he's coming towards me I want to back up slightly I'm backing up too hold down my arms but I'm, I'm keeping eye contact with him okay Wrath um I'm going to duck off to the side and sort of start to go around towards the back of the the canvas area of the tent. Okay. Um, the, the door of the building bursts open and two younger, uh, lankier men, um, both with similar beard styles, run out and they run towards the, man, the, the blacksmith and run to grab him um, as the partner of the blacksmith who he, who, who he was working with is kind of a little bit stunned by the whole whole thing and is standing off to the off to the side the two men burst for burst forward as well uh and they attempt to uh restrain the blacksmith um they kind of wrestle back and forth and the one is flung back and uh the the cooling pool, the the kind of bucket where the the metal would be cooled off, gets knocked over, and the the um the one man that's still grappling the other, the other one says, you, "Did you set him off? Did you set him off? What did you say? What did you say to him?" I mean, if this is the kind of reception I get when I say hello, I better be careful what else I'm going to say around this town. All I said was, you know, good day to this fine gentleman, and he went off on me. Um. The man who is knocked over um, stands himself stands himself up and kind of brushes off some of the water and says, "No, Pa, you just move right on. Pa took a blow from a horse a little while back, and he's been having some anger troubles a little bit. You you just move on. You you let him alone. We'll take care of him." Well, is he all right? Doesn't sound like he's himself. Does he need any medical attention? He'll be fine. He just don't like strangers no more. No more. Well, that's that's a key thing. If this is caused by him getting a blow to the head, it sounds a bit more serious than than just a, a big bump. He screams out, the blacksmith, and he says, I'll hammer you into dust. The gods are all going to come down on you and bring you all apart. You guys get, get, get going. Rudy, we can come back. <laughs> I think it's worth talking to some other people, perhaps, before we investigate this further, but I think we might have already seen what's happening here. All right, we'll be moving on for now, but keep an eye on your paw. That's what good kids do. I'm going to start to walk maybe around him. I, I don't, I don't like, stop. Like, no matter where I am as I'm walking, I, like, keep my eyes on them at all times. I don't turn my back to them. Hmm. And we're just going to wander. <laughs> the, the, the two sons take the blacksmith back into the building. And there's more screaming and muffling heard from within. 
sound of clattering from inside as you walk past the blacksmith and further into town. Was it an open kind of canvassy area? Like it was an outdoor so it, sort it, of like... Um, basically, there was the, the forge itself, which was covered by a, a, sh- a kind of shingled roof and then, then the building. So the actual forge area is, is open but covered. And so it can ventilate all the, all the smoke and steam. Yeah. Uh, I just want to kind of take a quick glance in before I catch up with these two, just around the forge area while they're mm-hmm. inside. The blacksmith's partner is still outside cleaning up. Oh, okay. Does that change your decision? Yes. I'm going to just uh, kind of approach him. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Are you with the blacksmith? Yeah. Uh, what you happened? with those two? Set them off? I am part of an investigation team from the Amethyst Academy. We were... An investigate? <laughs> yes. Where? Uh, we are looking into some troubles that were heard in Schaffberg. Schaffberg? Schaffberg. And we couldn't help but notice that the inn burned down across the road. This was where we were supposed to stay for the evening. We had lodgings set up. What happened? I didn't see none. Nothing? No. I were out of time. It looks like it's been quite destroyed for some time now. Yep. These types of things happen a lot in this area? Nope. Whole family dead. Not coming back. How did you know that? Ain't no one seen them. No one's seen them since. I don't ask. I don't know. Do you know where I could find some information? I do really seek to get my coin back. Maybe I could interest you with some. And I'm going to offer him one gold piece. Money's no good here. But if you got questions, you go up. You go up, talk to Constable Gregor. Ah, uh, yes. And where can I find him? He's up northeast. Over by the guard tower. Points over to the other side of the river. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, I leave. Catch up with these two. That was so strange. I just went off of me for no reasons. I've seen that sort of anger only once. That was only a few weeks ago. Horace was very quick to anger. Horace, it's true. I might be drawing wild conclusions here, but I know that we're on the lookout for strange magical happenings, and that man's intense hatred towards us just saying hello struck me as unusual. Yes, I would understand that, Rudy, you would have a better way with blacksmiths were it uh, a normal affair. Uh, I also suspect something suspicious, especially with the way a neighbor was so quick to dismiss uh, something as troubling as a fire. Yes, an inn burning down in a town, especially if you work or live across the street from it, that it seems unusual that they wouldn't know anything. They, he kindly directed me to a constable, uh, who we could potentially ask further questions, but we may want to come back to the inn and do a little uh, poking around ourselves. Uh, maybe off the record. Perhaps the constable and the next inn are both great places to investigate. Uh, we already seem to have a trail to follow. We just need to know what that trail is leading us to and why. I agree. Let's, let's head on over there. Now, constable or the regular folk first? It might be worth talking to the constable. Oh. He may know some. He might have a little bit more. In, uh, he might be potentially more uh, willing to share. Although, based on his tone and delivery, maybe he can set the mood for what the rest of the townsfolk feel. Mm. Hopefully, he's forthcoming and 
details about this tragedy. You cross past this, one of the streams that empties into the lake and continue on the road to the west. As you do, you pass by a large house set well back from the road itself against the banks of the lake. Um, and a house which is partially screened by several of the large elm trees and oaks that uh, dot around the lake. It's a very imposing house, far larger uh, than anything else in the town. Um, uh, the walls are, are whitewashed and clean, and the roof has brand new shingles. Um, there's a wide porch that's crossing in front of it, um, and columns of wood. There's a, a wrought iron gate surrounding the entire property, uh, and a rather um, well-tended garden along the pathway out front as you pass past it. Um, continuing along the road, it winds its way up and around the banks of the lake and you pass by um, what appears to be a set of stables. There's not a single horse in the yard. Damn it. <laughs> I really thought we could buy horses. Um, across uh, from... Um, the, the stables, though, there's a large um, warehouse and shop with a, a sign out the front that just says General Provisions. Um, and as you continue past, you can see the uh, more of a, a square uh, forming together where there is the, um, the constable barracks itself a small squat stone building with a defendable rooftop across the road from a large uh, two-story inn um, this this inn is quite a bit larger than the than the previous one and out on the front is a, a large sign uh, of a goblin stretching out the neck of a goose like a hose or a rope and then the goose itself is stringing itself around the goblin's neck. <laughs> this must be the goose and goblin. Yeah, the sign made me weary last time I was here, which is why I went with the shining shovel. It seemed just a bit more polished. I find this one quite amusing. I'm a, I'm a fan of geese. <laughs> <laughs> they remind me of simpler times. <laughs> they remind you of them ducks? Yes. <laughs> They remind me of simpler days. The geese were nicer than the ducks. Uh, the geese are never nicer than the ducks. I, I, clearly, you have less dealings with geese than I had assumed. Well, they are, I always send you to deal with the geese while I deal with the, the ducks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, if we're all done <laughs> we're, with that. Are we go, we're going to the constable's the, place The bird first. talk. Uh, that would be... Um, in my best interests. Well, all right then, but we're coming back here. We will need to seek lodging for this evening, and maybe we can find out more. But the constable might be able to give us a uh, direct uh, answer to our question. Mm -hmm. Let's go talk to the other man of the law. So this um, watchtower um, looks up it is probably the... the the second tallest building in the town, only matched by the bell tower of the chapel of the Sacred Flame, which is across the, the river to the north, across the lake to the, to the northeast. So, sorry. Um, although it is itself only a little bit taller than the inn across the road from it. Um, the doors are, are stout. The whole building is, is made of stone. Um, the, the door is is left open um, and the stairs lead up to it. Uh, I cautiously approach the door and just kind of peek my head in. Inside, um, as you head up the stairs, is the ground level of the tower. Inside are three men. One of them wears a suit of um, of half plate armor and a long sword strapped to his side. There's a few spears and halberds on a 
dingy rack in the room. And in the middle of the room, it looks like the three men are playing cards of some kind. Um, they might be, uh, but they aren't, it doesn't look like they're exchanging coins or gambling in, in any way. They're just passing the time with, with the game itself. Um, and they, the man in the half plate, um, who has this grizzled and pockmarked face, is completely, completely bald. Um, he looks up, looks up at you and says, and you're new in town. Hmm. Uh, yes, we are looking for the constable. Talking to him. We are from the Amethyst Academy. We had some questions about some of the goings on here. I'm sorry, what? We were hoping to use the lodgings at the Shining Shovel. Uh, we couldn't happen. We happen to notice that it doesn't stand the same way. No, a couple months back, fire. Whole family, real sad. All the patrons too. In the time, it was real bad. Did you find out what caused the fire? Well, nobody that was there, staying there at the time, survived. So we never got to find out what exactly happened, but. I imagine it probably started in the kitchen or in the hearth. Well, did your investigation team bring up any results in, in, in the origin? What's an investigation team? Uh, small town. <laughs> we're, we're a small town. We no matter. Uh, we are looking for uh, a man named Linus. Have you heard of him? Linus. Got more than the name, Matt? He was our contact here. That's all we know. Well, there's a pair of strange folk living in one of the cottages out across on the other side of the lake. Might be who you're looking for. Strange, S- strange like him? <laughs> Excuse you? Well, they, they got these pointy ears. That's it? Elves? I think so. Is that what they are? Well, how uh, tall are they? What else did they look like? Kind of skinny. Skinny and, and tall and pointed ears. Mm-hmm. They're probably elves. Uh, 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 I also was hoping to get my um, my armor checked out while I was here, perhaps improved. I went by the local blacksmith. He seemed um, out of sorts. Is there any sort of uh, illness spreading through the town these days? Ox kicked in the head a couple weeks back. Been angry ever since. Always was angry. Just Interesting. Does he still do business? Sure. I, I'm going to ask you a question now that may seem... Odd, but I'd like you to answer as, as honestly as you can. Uh, it's very important. Um, have you or any townsfolk seen or reported any strange rocks in the area? Strange rocks? Like strange how? Uh, a color, perhaps a hue on the rock that maybe um, is abnormal. I ain't seen no strange colored rocks. Okay. Just just a silly question. Trying to investigate. Investigate. I'm the constable here. Yes, it's a pleasure to meet you. you Name's Wilhelm. You're going to go Wilhelm. around bothering people in Schaffberg asking a bunch of questions. We might have a problem. Well, no, you're the constable, so you seem like the person who is the appropriate person to ask questions to. Is that correct? You're asking a lot of questions. (laughs) Yes. I don't like the tone of your questions either. I don't know what you're implying. Are you implying I don't do my job? No, I I am just a traveler. Lazy. I. You're putting words into my mouth, sir. Oh, I'll put more than a few words in your mouth. Is everybody in this town as hostile as, as you, uh, and the blacksmith? Because um, 
Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Constable. Uh, we will be taking our leave. And I'm going to start ushering you out the door. I don't, li- I don't like this town. <laughs> the people here are very rude, and I don't like people who are rude. And I walk up to the constable and say, Sir, as a, as a law woman from my own town, passing through, I understand the trouble that may, may come from getting new folk in here all the time. And I go to just, like, put out my hand. And he's going to shake it. I understand the trouble. <laughs> he looks at your hand. He takes your hand to shake it. And he shakes your hand. We, we appreciate your time and, and any questions. Rudy, right? Up from Tearhaven? You got it, sir. That is true. Right. This is my... You're one of them Whitakers. One and the same. You you know our family. Are there any, any Whitakers currently uh, hanging out in Shackburg? couple of your cousins might have been in here a few a few months ago, but don't see too many people coming out of Octonwall Forest. Mm. It's been a strange place these past few weeks. And uh, we've seen some strange stuff around my part of town too. Which is why we're, we're on the road seeing if anyone's heard the same thing, because we didn't see anything like, like what came our way until it did. And it could have been real trouble for us. You sure you haven't seen anything strange other than a few elves come through? Well, we only big bit of trouble we've had been a bunch of them Illyrians coming up past this way, heading north a couple weeks ago, causing a bunch of troubles. They do that. Illyrians are a bunch of troubles. Any reason why they were coming through here? Heading up to Toddsfeld. Imagine. Had a big argument with the... with the Flame Keepers. But then we saw them on their way. Arguments with Flame Keepers? You or the Lyrians? Lyrians couldn't tell you what about. Well, I'm gonna have to go talk. If... if if it's all right with you, maybe we can talk to those flame keepers and see what trouble was happening. Because maybe it was the same trouble that's happening in my, my neck of the woods. Fine by me. You want to go talk to the flame keepers? You be my guest. Thank you, sir. Of course, we don't mean cause no trouble more than than has happened. But you don't go disturbing around other folk asking questions for your investigation. Constable, I apologize for any misunderstanding. I was um, simply thrown off by the lodging being destroyed that we had set out for. Uh, do you recommend a, a different inn in town? I noticed there are two. The The shovel used to be our favorite, but uh, which one would you recommend we go to? Which one do you enjoy the most? Well, you could... The, the goose and goblin, those folk, strange, strange folk. It's more strange folk. Up to the, the warped wheel, they'll treat you right. Thank you, Constable. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Apologies again. Thank you for your time. And if we have any other questions, can we come back this way? If you, can, if you have any other questions, you can take them with you on your way. All right, sir. It's a pleasure. Hopefully we can meet again on better circumstances next time. I'll bring my family by to see this beautiful place. I walk out. I, I walk out with <laughs> you. Okay. Well, We're going to the Goose and Goblin. Of course we are. But remember, quick to anger, quick to danger. Be careful. Is that a rule? shows up. If it isn't, it should be. I we uh, I seldom lose my cool, and I wasn't losing my cool. I won't lose my cool. All right, I trust you. You're you're a true gentleman. So I was simply asking questions. Unfortunately, I, we're we're now walking away from the. Mm-hmm. So I'm out of earshot. I make sure I'm out of earshot okay. before I 
Unfortunately, I think I can do a better job here than the constable can. It's, it seems like he has... He couldn't even tell me where the fire originated. That, that's the first thing you look for if there's a fire. Sometimes with these small town folks... Is that a rule? <laughs> <laughs> so just, scribbling in his notebook? Rule. Yeah. Sometimes with these sm- smaller town folk... You know, I may live in Tear Haven, but I, I've been from seen larger places, you know, I've been around, been out to war myself from other places, you know, sometimes these folks, they get in their head that well, their way is their way. I say when we go to the Goose and Goblin, which is the one he didn't recommend, which makes me more curious to go there, um, I don't want to get in any more trouble with the constable, so if any townsfolk look like they don't want to be spoken to then we leave them alone. But perhaps just sitting and listening might reveal something. And perhaps there's somebody in that tavern who looks like they want to talk. Keep your eyes open. Maybe we can even draw a little bit of attention to ourselves and make it a good time in there. We'll look for some people up. Yes. I would also suspect that we should, after my first line of questioning, keep our investigation a secret. I'm starting to think that people don't like if those we ask, going around asking no questions. Eyes. If we ask the right questions and make it sound like we're weary travelers who have an old friend in town who we're looking for, that might work better. So no more academy business. And Agreed. Perhaps now is a good time to throw on the disguise while we head into the, um, the Goose and Goblin. And afterwards, after we listen... And uh, rule number 25, listen, observe, and we'll learn. Then we head to perhaps the, um, the Flame Keepers. See what they know. Flame Keepers, there's, a, there's elves they were talking about? And the elves who live out on the outskirts. Hmm. Do we know what, what's, what race Linus is? I don't know if we asked River. <laughs> you know, that would have been helpful <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't ask her for any of those <laughs> questions. She, she just gave us a name. Linus and... We just uh, walked. She said yeah. Linus. She goes, said, Linus, like, see ya. <laughs> and, and on we went. Uh, in retrospect, probably some more day, day seven of travel. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who are we looking we'll for? We'll get better at our jobs as we go. As yeah, we this is like our first, this is our first <laughs> week. Like, we're still in training. We're, we're, we're getting the rust. We're yeah, dusting yeah. the rust off. We're dusting, yeah. we're, the dust, we're, we're dusting the warden off. <laughs> we're just getting it. <laughs> All right, look to the end. <laughs> to the end. Are you disguising? Uh, no, I'm just gonna put my hood up. I okay. don't want to. Uh, I don't want to draw too much attention to myself to be like a fourth new member of the, of the. <laughs> Fair. So I guess we'll start at the uh, the goose and the goose and goblin. Goose and goblin. Okay. Um, you head over to the goose and goblin. So, as I said, this is um, quite a bit larger than the other, um, than what, even what remained of the Shining Shovel. Mm -hmm. Um, And the, in itself, is a wide two-story building. And as you push open the double doors, um, it's pretty cold. Fire in the hearth isn't lit. There's a few torches and lanterns illuminating the stone floor, but the place itself is pretty cold. There's a set of stairs leading up to the second level, and the whole shape of the uh, the ground level here is roughly L-shaped around what might be uh, a kitchen or a storeroom on one side uh, and um, another of the same on the other and then bridging between where these two uh, rooms are kind of altering the shape of the main level, there is the bar itself where there is a wiry man with thinning hair um, cleaning some of the tin mugs. Um, And he is the only person in the entire tap room. Sneak for a Talking to some townsfolk. <laughs> Where do the locals gather? It's and before we even make our way into it, I'm just going to, uh, hey, uh, should we go to that other place? This place looks kind of dead. I 
there might we might find what we're looking for. This is still curious. The 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 one person who's in here, he's behind the bar cleaning yeah. the um, warped I, wheel. I, one moment, <laughs> and I, I walk in, and I approach the bar. What can I get you for? He says. Uh, in a bit of a raspy voice. You don't have many patrons today. I was just... I, I expected to see um, more people in here. Uh, I, I, it is I, the morning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the wrong... <laughs> I mean, we'll check the. Uh, this, <laughs> it's not even noon yet. This is he a. Says, Ain't noon yet. That's that's <laughs> very fair, but I, an inn serves breakfast, do they not? And brunch, and uh, this is a very popular travel location. It's right on the way. I was, I was expecting. Breakfast. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> what what do you serve? You got some porridge, a bit of sausage. Mm got some cold coffee but we can heat it up for you um coffee and porridge please With two gold pieces i toss them two gold which is an outrageous <laughs> <laughs> that's well i i don't <laughs> i'm new to this i don't know how much these towns charge two gold pieces for all of that i wonder how much you charge for a night 10 gold how does that compare to the inn down on the other side of town? Best <laughs> prices in town. Mm. Promise you that. Well, I just I just <laughs> tossed him two gold, and I'm like, this is going to be the best porridge, I assume. Oh yeah, you'll like it. Can I get your friend something? Oh, I am I am not hungry this morning. I already <laughs> had my breakfast on my way in. I'm fine. Uh, thank you. Uh, you passing through town? You want a room? We were thinking of it. Um, we haven't decided if we're staying the night yet. We we may be back. All right. All right. You're not thinking of going up to the warp wheel, are you? It depends on their prices, uh, to be honest. I mean, we were actually heading to the uh, the silver shovel. Is it the silver shovel? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the- but it seems to have burnt down. <laughs> Shining Real, Shining Shining Shining. Real shame. Any Such idea? A good family. Any idea how it how it happened? I was here. Te- it was a busy night here. Ah. Saw the fire blazing up across. And well, place burned the ground. Seemed like everybody died. Real sad. Yeah, we've um, we've only been in town for. An hour or so. Uh, we've talked to a few of the townsfolk. No, this place was a very popular tourist location. People would stop here on their travels between all the various cities surrounding the area. Uh, seems a little quiet these days. And also, um, the people seem less accustomed to the busyness that I expected in Schaffberg. Has business been rough lately? Well, you know, we got them them Illyrians up in Leuchten and so they've been coming they've been coming through but there's been a lot less caravans coming down and a lot less coming up hmm interesting well thank you uh how's that porridge coming oh right you want a porridge yeah sorry sorry uh he, he, he yells back a hey, dog mouth Put off more of that slap! <laughs> Dog mouth? I'm gonna. Is it one of my cousins? I'm gonna go have a seat. <laughs> I'm gonna go find a, a table to sit at. I come over with you. Um, there's, a, there's a voice from behind. How many? Well, there's three of them, but just one of them wants to eat. He says, he wants a beer? Uh, just a coffee is fine. Too rich for my taste. <laughs> Soup yourself. I, uh, while I'm, I'm going to put my back to, uh, the bar owner and I want to look through, uh, 
Bruce's eyes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to send Bruce out out of the house Mm -hmm. and try to fly up and see into the second story. Is there a second story? There is. There is. So I'm going to have him kind of do a little... I'm going to do a little scouting mission through Bruce. So I'm just going to like slump in the chair and just kind of like, <laughs> you're just like sitting there. And and we're- I'm, I'm like, I can see this and I'm like, well, let me tell you about my children. <laughs> Since we've been traveling for days, but we haven't really talked about my children. There was this time where black us. <laughs> and, and just- you just glaze over. <laughs> and, and so and does Will. A nod and like a little bit of drool. He's <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm. St- I'm still wait. I, does he bring me my food? Um, my he, he does. Um, as as you fly up, um, you can see um, that there are at least five guest. Uh, sorry, there's four guest rooms on the upper level. Three small private guest rooms and one dormitory style guest room with bunks. There's a main hallway dividing the, the the two of them, and then there's a common room on the second level. Is there anybody? Anybody? Yeah, here? there's uh, there's a few people in the common room actually. Um, two of them are um, sitting down with what might be some cold coffee in front of them, and they are uh, sitting staring directly at each other not saying a word and then there is um a another there as you fly through the the common room um another man comes out of the dormitories and look, look through are you hiding with bruce in some way yeah he's kind of just chilling outside okay and like looking bruce in is on the tree or something yeah yeah okay uh another man comes out of one of the the, dorm, the dormitory set of rooms and sits down with the other three, and they're all sitting around this table in the common room, all staring at, at, at each other, not saying a word. I'm going to stay for about a minute and just see. Do they say anything after, like, a minute? No. They don't say a word. Either. Interesting. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave... I'm going to stay with Bruce there and just kind of stay in that moment. So I'm still slumped okay. over. Do I see him pour the coffee? Am I witnessing yeah, that? Yeah, he, he pours the coffee out of a, out of a tin mm-hmm. uh, sort of a, uh, kettle. Um, and it's ba- basically the way that he, they make your, the, your coffee is they've got the ground up coffee beans that they put in the bottom of the mug and then pour the hot water into the cup. So all the grits are in the coffee. Just like you like it. And how's the porridge look? <laughs> um, it's fluffy. Uh, he says, "Want blueberries or raspberries?" Oh, I love all berries. You can throw. Can I have a little bit of both? Five silver extra. <laughs> Just raspberries is fine. <laughs> uh, I I kind of investigate i'm, I'm gonna like poke through the food uh <laughs> before i eat it and like waft the coffee does does is there anything unusual about it or does it make seem an investigation check <laughs> and as you're doing that i go do you want me to make it taste better like i do with all our other stuff i get an eight um there might be some extra protein in the porridge <laughs> Yeah, let me just. I press to digitate it. Like, there you go. Enjoy. Don't now it's now it's gold worthy. Now it all tastes like raspberries. <laughs> now it tastes like oh, make it taste like both raspberries and blueberries. It's all there. <laughs> if I start to convulse, please. Does, does anybody know first aid? Um, and I'm just sitting there. <laughs> Raph, I'm I'm relying on you here, and I take I take a <laughs> basics. <laughs> Take a spoonful of the porridge. Uh, what did it, well, Rudy made the whole thing taste like raspberries, so it tastes super sweet. But nothing happens to me. It's really squishy. <laughs> you know, even with your press of digitation, I still find this quite unappetizing. Listen, I do taste, not texture. All right, <laughs> there's only so I, much I can do. I take a sip of the coffee it is like and the consistency of thick glue. I spit it back <laughs> into the cup. Well. 
I don't see any reason. the coffee back into the cup, but there's all the, like, the coffee grits <laughs> on your teeth. You have some between your... It is left. <laughs> well, everywhere. Right, well, that's not coming out. Oh. <laughs> um, now, where was that? Then the wheel got stuck <laughs> in the mud and... Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I think I don't think we're going to find anything here, and I think we've uh, pestered them long enough. I uh, let's get wrath. Still listening through, uh, are, are Bruce. Are you making your way through the through the gruel? Um, I've t- I've only taken one bite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still digging around in it with a spoon. Like I'm I'm picking it up and letting it slowly fall back into the bowl. Worth every penny. While he's doing this, I I, I continue to observe these three just staring at each other. Uh, if I look closely, uh, is there anything off with their eyes, with their general posture, or are they just three people sitting on a table just staring at each other? One of them sighs oddly for for a moment. Are they um, drinking the coffee? Yeah. Do they have like a glazed look in their eye? Um, no. Uh, the the three of them will um. All of them are armed, uh, and underneath, and while they wear tra- uh, heavy traveler's clothes, there's definitely a, maybe a bit of chainmail or boiled leather underneath their their jerkins. Uh, are they all the same? Like, look like are they all like blonde hair, blue eyes sort of uh, idea? Or uh, no, uh, all all of them are. What are their general uh, features? Um, all of them are men. Um, one of the, all of them are rather well built, like they've spent most of their lives working on, on, on a farm. Most of them are quite tall as as well. Um, one of them sports a uh, a thick mustache. Um, another is clean shaven otherwise, and another has uh, a, a bit of a short, well cropped beard. Um, the one with the with the beard has longer hair than than the rest, jet black. Um, and well, all of them wear traveler's clothes. There's no uniform between them. Like they're they're not in any sort of livery or uniform. All of them have a mi- mix match of common cl- traveler's clothes. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have Bruce before he comes back down. He's just going to tap on the window, but stay hidden. And I kind of want to like peek around the window and just tap on it and see if they look his way. Okay, um, Bruce can make a stealth check. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Good boy. Uh, <laughs> I get a five. Um, the men definitely hear it. One of them gets up and looks out the window and sees Bruce. Meow! <laughs> he, get out of here, cat! Scram! Meow! And it... And Bruce runs off along the side of the edge, and then he, and then I'm gonna come back into, uh, okay. into Wrath. Wrath, what do you make of this place? There's three men upstairs. They all seem fairly normal. Uh, I don't know what to make of it, but I think we should come back here later, or. Uh, check out the wagon wheel. The warped wheel. <laughs> the Before we warped out, Would you like any porch? Uh, that looks awful. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> this isn't drool for food. This. I is... mean, it looks awful, but I made it taste great. That's uh. I'm that's afraid. An, that's a start. I'm afraid of what it might have tasted. But like I, uh, <laughs> I don't mind waiting till you finish your meal. I'm quite all right. I think it's time <laughs> to leave this place. It, Take uh, a stroll down a uh, beautiful countryside. To the warped wheel? Yeah. Yeah. Let's head there. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, can I uh, Can I book you a room for this evening? We'll be back this evening to... Uh, Maybe. We, we might be back Better this... Better book now might be booked up by the end of the night. By, by the afternoon. I'll take my chances, <laughs> sir. It will be our own uh, folly if uh, Suit yourself. we miss a room in this fine establishment. Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, we got to get it. 
Let's get out of here. I, this I'm place like, is crazy. As I'm talking, I'm like backing out the door. I'm like, thank you, sir. No, we'll, we'll be back. We'll be all good. We might be uh, assuming too that uh, everything's just evil, but like it's just dead. It's just like really slow. <laughs> like, well, I mean, the food was evil. <laughs> That's fair. The porridge was evil. The, the way he made that coffee was a crime against humanity. <laughs> you are a coffee connoisseur as well. You know it. <laughs> you make the best, though. It's true. I don't do it very well. Magic. <laughs> it's all magic. <laughs> Smart. All right. We had the warped wheel. The, we warped, the wheel. warped wheel. Is it is, late well, enough at night? Is, <laughs> the warp, is the warped wheel on the way, or is there is the flame keep the flame keepers on the way towards the um, wheel. If, if you imagine that the whole town is like a spoke around the lake in the center the the, sh- uh, the shining shovel and then you go south along along uh, to where the um, the goblin the goose and goblin is mm-hmm. and then you head back uh, back up north um, to the warp wheel mm-hmm. and then in the northeastern part of town, is where is where the the temple, uh, sorry, the the church of the uh, sacred fire is. Uh, comrades, I propose a detour. Maybe we, before it gets too dark, and while we wait for the patrons to spill in, we do our own investigation of the shining shovel. Right now. Uh, it might be best under this light uh, to see what we can uncover. That's very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always thinking of you, Wilhelm. Yeah. Like as of now or like previously? <laughs> You're always in my mind. Yes, Bruce. Rudy? <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. He's uh, on our team. Do you, what do you think? No harm poking around, I suppose. Uh, I would say maybe we can go in the back door because the blacksmith was not too uh, enthused about seeing us peeking around his shop. So we best avoid that drama. I agree. All right. I want to. Yeah. So I want to swing around back of the uh, the shining shovel. Um, And you said there was another house that was caught fire beside it, too. Yeah. So maybe start on that side and work our way towards, like, kind of go around the back. Put my hood up. Because <laughs> we're sneaking. We be sneaking. I swear if they don't see my face and that's bright red hood, they wouldn't even know who I am. <laughs> okay. So you're going to take the north part, side of the, the lake and then come back down. Okay. What time is it by the time we get there? Um, Ish. It doesn't take long to cr- cross town. This is, this is a very small town, of course. Uh, not uh, lar- larger than Tierhaven, uh, but not long enough that you know you can get from one side of town to, the, to another in a couple minutes, basically. Okay, right? Because only about a thousand people live here. Um, the as you roll up around the um, so if you go up north and roll up around the lake itself, you will pass by the warped wheel um, and. A few other of the um, other establishments, but basically the the whole north end of town, um, between where the warp wheel is and over to the church, is the least developed part of town. The south part of town is, is the most well developed. And as you're heading northward, you cross another bridge where the uh, mill is, the water wheel, and there's a bridge going over the the river that drains the lake itself. And this is the main road that if you were to continue taking this road all the way north, you would eventually get to Todsfeld and then Ashbed. As we walk by the warped wheel, does it look lively at all? Um, the, there is, as you pass by the warped wheel itself, um, the, Um, the warped wheel uh, is the, ha- has this large colorful sign that is a bunch of warped planks cut in the shape of a wheel painted in the colors of the rainbow 
Um, so each plank is is painted a, a different uh, a different color. Um, and it's kind of emblazoned with two frothing mugs on top of the wheel, as if the wheel is spinning and the two mugs are spinning on, on, on top of the wheel. Um, there fancy. is a um, there's a plume of smoke rising from the, the chimney of, of the building, um, and the whole place um, out, outside, there is a middle-aged woman uh, sweeping at the porch who... who uh, waves at you as you pass by. Maybe we should go in. <laughs> well, Raph. Let's do it. I'm, uh, I'm always down. <laughs> <laughs> I could use some good porridge and a coffee. <laughs> well, Is that what you're looking for? Good day, ma'am. Um, she, uh, she, she smiles. Uh, she's a portly woman. As she, she sweeps up uh, and um, uh, sweeps out the porch and she... Uh, uh, wait, waves back to you. She says, "Oh, good day. Are you new in town? Are you passing through? We are on on uh, business. Are you staying the night? Uh, we haven't considered, but uh, we've been through town, and it's looking a bit uh, interesting for places to stay. Well, we got um, we got good rooms here, and we got fresh mutton in from from the farm. So if you're thinking staying." Right here at the warped wheel. Well, how much? Well, supper's three silvers. A night is a gold piece. That's much more reasonable than the other inn in town. Um, how is he staying in business with such hefty prices? You know, if I didn't know any better, I would say Borgen wants to go out of business. Huh. Any any idea why? You want to come in for a pint? I would love to. Laugh? Uh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. I never say no to a good pint of ale, especially it's, when it's uh was offered by such a a lovely woman. I mean, it's still earlier than noon, isn't it? <laughs> She she's a uh, portly woman. She's probably about in her mid in her mid fifties or, or or so, um, and she says she says, "Come on in. It's past noon. <laughs> you can have a pint." I suppose. Uh, yeah, let's get a pint. Sit down. Mutton. It's my favorite. It's all right. Come on in. Come on in. We'll 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 see if Ollie can rustle up some grub for you if you're hungry. My stomach immediately just. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, if you have some. Um, she introduces herself. I'm Elba. My husband and I, Ollie, run the place. Um, and, al- along with our our five youngins, they're they're getting a little bit old, but they'll they'll take over it someday, I'm sure. You come on in, and the the hearth is is warm, and the tables are clean, and there's a few others uh, milling about, and a few of uh, Elba's. Uh, Grandkid, perhaps her grandchildren are are washing some of the dishes, washing up some of the dishes and cleaning up uh, up around the place. And there's a few others that are uh, enjoying breakfast or lunch around in in the inn as you come in. Reminds me of home. Um, is there a free table for us? Um, she uh, there's two, um, perhaps teenage, um boys that are at one of the one of the tables and she kicks the side of the table and says rupert you get out of here we got customers <laughs> uh i i take a seat but then i i look at you guys and i'm like i just want to listen for a moment and see what sort of conversations are happening in here see if anything is unusual about this place well there- maybe we'll have more luck if we can find linus in a town where everybody so far has been rude and somewhat unwelcoming, this place is sticking out like a sore thumb, and it makes me just as uneasy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, are you always this suspicious? It's how I've survived most of my life, yes. Uh, yes, the barn life. Uh, it is a sheltered one. Never underestimate ducks. <laughs> 
what rule number is that? <laughs> <laughs> rule number 83, never underestimate ducks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can sit and wait for my pint. Thankfully. I um, <clears throat> I follow her up to like, is there a bar area? Uh, there, there is. And she says, well, we got some leftover shepherd's pie. Is that okay? Is that okay? It sounds delicious. I would love some. And I, I follow her up to like, I guess, behind the counter. Mm. How long have you been here in this quaint little village? Well, just turned 57 in the spring. So 57 years. 57 years. Oh, darling, I feel you. I'm going on 53 myself. And where are you from? Tearhaven. Oh, Tearhaven. Thank you. Now, I think Ollie might have a cousin up there. Danforth, I think his name is. Danforth. Oh, Danforth. He's always so lively in our community. <laughs> <laughs> Loves just chatting up the neighbors and hitting up local taverns to connect with all his mm. community members. Interesting. Most Carlins here in our, our uh are here in Shaftburg, but a few of us scatter about. Mm. Same with my family. Yeah, we find uh, Whitakers all over the place. But are you getting much people coming in these days? Few here, there. Um, still the odd caravan heading up to up to Toddsfeld and further up to a Ash Bay. People coming up from Loikton. We, uh, you know, the word is... We've been getting the news in from the ca from the capital mm -hmm. about them Illyrians coming through, and the word is that the Duke of Loikton's declared along the Illyrians with the Illyrians. Never thought I'd see the day when that happened. Well, and you see things have been tense here in town. Because our flame keepers have taken up with them fallen fire folks. And a bunch of folks in town have too. That's the word. That they've switched over to the fallen fire. Interesting. Hmm. Well, that's some. Um... So you find some people a little bit more somber around town. Some people leave in town. Well word is they've been going to the capital to Drakenheim yep hmm. any reason why they're making their way up there they're just pretty know. run down place all of them people that follow that fallen fire say they all have to make a pilgrimage but few people left they were gone a few weeks most of them up and went in the middle of the night then they come back a few weeks later and, well, they keep a little bit more to themselves than before. So they've been to the city and they come back and they're a bit off? Well, that's what Ollie thinks. Hmm. Well, it's mighty interesting. Well, this conversation is going I want to. I want to, uh, uh, telepathy, sorry, into uh, Rudy. Ask about Linus. Now, uh, we making our way through, I have some friends, of course, scattered around the countryside. I, my friend Linus, friend of a friend, cousin, really, heard he might be around these parts. You ever heard of him? I ain't heard anyone going by the name Linus. Linus. Nobody's strange or maybe does a little bit of magic. Well, there is Rams. Rams. South of town by the Grove of Elms. Maybe he knows. Then there's some two pointy-eared folk that moved in at the other house across the lake. When they move in? Oh, maybe about four months ago. Oh, it's pr pretty recent. You haven't been much around? They came round, but uh, came round for some of our wines. All right. 
but that was about it. Sound like there's some refined folk. Hmm. Do I? Are there any other conversations? I'm. I've been sitting very quietly listening mm-hmm. to this conversation, but also trying to pick up if anybody else in the bar area is talking. Um, her husband um, is a very thin man, so much so that in the moments they stand beside each other, they kind of look like the number ten. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> or one, uh, depending or on the zero, <laughs> yeah. Um, the orange, and then. Uh, he's been going around, um, kind of bossing around some of his grandchildren, uh, get, getting them to bring in some of the lumber and the water. And, and there's a there's a few other folks that look like they might be from and about. There's a there is a um, another man um, with a well-to-do velvet cap um, and a light blue jerkin um, that is taking his breakfast a, 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 as well. Um, and he, uh, is one of the other guests and all, all he is asking him what he, what he wants. And the man says, Oh, I'll be heading back up North in a few days and it won't be long now. It's all, it's all right. A few more days. So the, the run of the rest of the conversation you pick up. Wrath, would you like to do anything? Um, what was the, his, uh, Ollie and what was his wife's name? Elba. Elba. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, I'm gonna go back to Rudy. Ask about the Illyrians. Now the <laughs> Illyrians have 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 they come through town? Other than the Flame Keeper, have you seen any more of them other than that? Well, our our Flame Keeper's not Illyrian. She she, um, we, but a few Illyrians did come up a few weeks past. Mm-hmm. Had an argument. Um, they had all these silver and blue banners with them, all mm. riding on horses. Very, very impressive. Mm. And they went up. There was a bit of a argument, from what I understand, and then they left and headed further north. Further north. Interesting. At the mention of uh, Illyrians, I watch very closely the man in the blue jerk, and does he respond? Does he look up or anything at that? Make a perception check. Twenty-two. No, he doesn't flinch. Rudy, how many of them were there? You said there was a. They had horses. How many did you say About would come through? Twenty of them came through. Twenty. It's a large amount. Strange amount. Larians don't normally come through this part. Well, they were all soldiers. Soldiers. I'm a soldier myself. Fighting in they the wars. Like a bunch of knights. Maybe stirring up some trouble. I've heard about some. Shady things that illyrian has been doing in history. Well, you know, they've, they've been saying, and that's the only thing that, you know, these, that whole, uh, that, that whole Lucretia Matthias woman's all stirring up on all so- sorts of trouble in the capital and, and up in Drakenheim, and they said that she's not to be trusted, that she's trying to turn the royal family against the, the rest of Westmar. She's going to bring doom to us all, so... I don't know what to make of it. It sounds really scary to me. Yeah. There's scary things when soldiers get together and people are fighting wars. It's best to stay put for now and and don't draw too much attention. I think you're doing a great job here, but Hmm. we're passing through just to see some folks not causing any trouble ourselves. But it's sad to hear. Well, you stay as long as you need. We'll, uh, as I said, if you want one of the rooms we got a few available so you're more welcome to stay here yeah go ahead and, and put some rooms for us on hold we'll probably be back tonight ollie uh there, there's three of you yeah you, you, you want your own rooms yeah <laughs> <laughs> everybody can have their own room ollie you you, you better clean up the spare Wrath can have that one. <laughs> I mean, I'm quite used to the bar, and I can take the spare room. All I need is a place to lay my head. All right. Wrath, we get upgraded. <laughs> oh, thank you. 
I mean, I saw your bedroom. That's so thoughtful. You have very elegant sheets. It's <laughs> a little ridiculous. Well, but it's, it's great to meet a friend, someone who knows, you know, what it's like to, to raise a family and, and earn a hard day's work. We'll be best be uh, coming by soon. Any sites in town that are worth checking out while we're here? I'm a little bit of a, a fan of local history. I'd like to take in what Schaffberg has to offer. I couldn't tell you the first thing about history, I'm afraid. Any locations that visitors often like to, to scope out? Well, the only other place is uh, uh, the Reeves. The Reeves' big old house. If you oh, know. yes, we walked by it, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Reeves got the biggest, nicest house in town, I guess. If you're into buildings and stuff, you might want to go talk to Oh, I am. Talk to them. But put on a fancy new roof. Well, thank you very much. You've been very kind. And uh, I look forward to spending the evening here. Did you finish up your meals? Where are you going to head off to next? Flamekeeper. <laughs> yeah, we it's can. It's either the Flamekeeper, the elves, or we investigate the, uh, the ruin. Are the elves on the way to the Flamekeeper, or are they after the Flamekeeper if we're going around the lake? Um, if you're if you're going back around the north of, of the lake, um, you'll pass by the the cottage where these elves are supposed to stay, and the, both the the church itself. And do you think it's worth passing by them for now and getting to the ruins to check them out? And we'll make our way back up the the northeast side. Uh, so you want to go to who first? The if shine you and shovel. The circle. The the ruins would be the last thing. Yeah. Like going back to the shine and shovel would be the last. Yeah, thing we can come back here later. I say that we just do it in order: elves, flame keeper, ruins. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Less walk. I think we have enough time for the day. All right. Well, right there, I think is where we're going to take our break. We will see you all in another fifteen minutes. And we are back from our break. Uh, before we dive back in, I want to give a shout out to Tabletop Audio for all the ambient music we use, including the lovely music in our intro videos. So check them out. It's all free and it's all there to elevate your game. TabletopAudio.com. Of course, don't forget to take a look at the link- links below for our Teespring store, where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dude shirts, as well as a few new ones, including Clunk Clunk. Um, we also have This Is Way Bigger Than Ducks, as well as The Dusk Warden. So take a look at those, bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. If you're enjoying the stream and you want to support our work, check us out on Patreon. You can find out how by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community, which is exclusive for our patrons. So if you are joining us on Patreon, make sure to join the Discord where you can chat with all of us about all things nerdy, all things D&D, and all things Drakenheim and Dusk Wardens related. So check it out. That's our Discord community exclusive to patrons. With that, we shall return to the shadows. Our heroes leave the goose and goblin. Or sorry, the warped wheel. Too many in names. (laughs) Um, Our heroes leave the warped wheel um, after having visited the goose and goblin earlier and now proceed uh, northeast along the northern part of the lake of the small village uh, the small town of Shaftburg. Ahead of you is the chapel, uh, the Church of the Sacred Fire, a building known as the Chapel of St. Irene. Like all churches of the Sacred Flame, um, it is a large stone building with many chimneys to ventilate all of the smoke and fires that are used in the religious rituals and the whole building itself is actually surrounded by a 20 foot high stone wall um, that forms a courtyard around the church proper Um, the building of the church otherwise um, has a tall bell tower off to one side of it and then the high steepled roof heading along the back towards the nave. And you can see the signs of a, of a few rooftops of, a, of, of as if there might be some outbuildings in the courtyard 
uh, surrounding the church itself. Mm. Is this before the, the elf farm? You see this as you approach towards the small cottage where um, where you've heard perhaps um, some elves live. Hmm. Pointy-eared fellows. Yeah. Well. Let's lead the way. I lead the way. Okay. So... Heading along the pathway, you come uh, next to a small cottage uh, surrounded by several high trees um, in along the northern, the northeastern side of the banks of the lake. Um, there is. Um, it is a small, um, square building um, with heavy curtains hung over the windows. It is only a single-story cottage. Um, the outer uh, parts of the building look like they have been freshly plastered. There's been some recent uh, repairs done to this facility. It looks nice. Looks homey. I, I approach and I, I'm actually going to just knock on the door. <laughs> okay. Will they throw them off? They'll never see that coming. <laughs> After a moment, the door opens. Um, and a elven woman answers the door. She has slight waif-like features, although she is uh, probably about uh, uh, approaching six feet tall. Um, her hair is tied uh, up um, kind of in a, in a bun in the back, uh, a, a bun in the back of a, her head, and it's kind of hard to tell what exactly shade of brown it is, because it kind of flutters back and forth with undertones of green. Um, she is, um, wearing a heavy green cloak, um, that conceals her arms and the rest of her, her entire figure. Her hand just kind of reaches out from it as she o opens the, like, peeks around the corner of the door. Um, and she says, um, in a little bit of a halting, um, in the, the tongue of Westamar, she says, can I help you? I respond in Elvish, and I say, terribly sorry to bother you, ma'am. Uh, we're investigators from the city, and we've heard of some strange ongoings in these parts. Uh, we're looking for a man by the name of Linus, and we're investigating the uh, burning down of the local inn. We're just going door to door and seeing if anybody has information that might aid us in our investigation. And um, just wanted to see if you could answer a few questions for us. All in Elvin. I have no idea what you've said. Gibberish. Ah, la, la. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. The woman is very surprised at your Elvin. Um, and she replies in, in Elvin, um, you speak Elvin reasonably well. Where did you learn to do that? My family had a lot of, uh, dealings with the dwarves and the elves. And, um, as a young boy, I was practiced in both languages. Uh, you know, we were traders, so to work with the other people of the free lands, we had to pick up a few tricks in order to converse and discuss. Hmm. And sorry, you... S Why are you... Oh, in investigating... Um, over in Tierhaven, there's been a few uh, 
recent issues that we're looking into and we're worried that it may have spread this way. Uh, nothing to concern yourself with, no dangers, just trying to figure out if anything curious has happened or if you might know where our contact is, who's supposed to be around here, by the name of Linus. The, this Linus you are looking for, a man? Uh, I turn back to Rath and in common, is is Linus a man? I'm, I know that he is named Linus. You've met him in passing years ago, did you not? That's yes, he was a... You said he. Wizard. It was a wizard. He was, he? <laughs> think? Does Rath know? Do he's I probably human. Probably. <laughs> I know Possibly. he's. Uh, I know it's human. It's a human Linus. We're there, looking for one human Linus. There is. We are new to town. We don't know everybody. Very, we're very sorry. We just are trying to keep to ourselves. You are looking for a problem that happened in your town. Uh, we're looking for possible problems that are happening in other towns that might be similar to ours to help us further solve the mystery. And you are doing this of your own accord? Uh, we are I'm going to go into his head. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are the deputy and sheriff of Tierhaven. And so it is we, we have Rudy, the sheriff, I point to her, Howdy. has family out this way. So taking it upon ourselves to make sure that the surrounding villages are safe. And um, that is all. We're just hoping that everybody's doing okay and that we don't see any more issues in the surrounding villages. Are you doing this in Elvish? Yes. Okay. I'm just like, hello. I, I point to her. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> Hmm. The the woman looks. She come back later this evening. Is there a particular time? After sunset. You can expect us. Thank you. Your name, if I could ask. My name is Lorwyn. Pleasure to meet you. I am Wilhelm Wolfsbane. This is Rudy Whitaker and Raphael. Hello. <laughs> well met. We'll see you after sunset. Yes. And I, I bow and I step away. And I, I also bow like I'm I've never dealt with elves before, so I'm like, hello. I just turn around. <laughs> Guys, we have a lead. Were they friendly? They were. They were friendly, and I believe they might have information that will help us. Either that or we're walking straight into a trap. That is yet to be determined. We are to come here after sunset to converse with them. It may be that they know something about this town, but I would also just be weary. Everybody be on guard. But we will continue our investigation, and I say we return here just as they asked after sunset. I mean, she looks pretty skinny. I think I could take her if she tries anything. Oh, I'm sure we could. But she had a warmth about her. I All right. I feel like I want to do as she says because it may lead us to further information about what's happening in this town. Mm. And she seems... The way she presented the question or the response of come here after, after sunset leads me to believe that she has secrets she wishes to inform us of. That's the vibe I had. So we best not draw too much more attention to ourselves just in case the constable of this town decides to kick us out for Absolutely. being a bit more curious. Rule number 92, always listen to your gut. And my gut tells me that I should 
listen to her. Them rules. In this case, correct. In most cases. In some cases. <laughs> almost every case. They're to be determined. That's debatable. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Anyways. To the flame keeper. Let's go see the flame keeper who's not not with the Illyrians. Sounds like they had a bit of a conversation that did not go well. You headed towards the church. The stone walled building with a pair of wooden double doors depicting the martyrdom of Saint Irene, um, who gave her life fighting against demonic possessions. Um, the doors open at your push into a courtyard. Um, the courtyard itself um, is completely open. Um, there is a broad path that leads up to the doors of the church. Um, there is um, a, an acolyte tending to the garden that is in the courtyard, although most of the garden is not well tended. It looks to be mostly a, a vegetable garden that has a few too many weeds. Mm -hmm. um, the gardener is not being very diligent of, as she works. Rath, do you want to go first? <laughs> do you want me to take this one? Uh, I'm... <laughs> Dust myself off. Uh, I'm going to approach the gardener. Hello. Oh, hello. She's a rather plain young woman. She maybe is 17, 18 tops. She's a young acolyte. Um, as opposed to having the typical robes of a young flamekeeper, um, the colors have been inverted, and you can see that that um, the whereas many of the Church of the Sacred Fire wear golden, red, or white robes, sometimes accented with, with blues, these robes are strictly black and white. Hmm. We are looking for the flamekeeper. Ah, yes. She is in the sanctuary. May we see her? Certainly. I don't think she's busy right now. Flame there we have two flamekeepers here. Flamekeeper Edelhide is tending to the crypts, but you may speak with Flamekeeper Dana, I'm sure she'll be there. Thank you. And I just carry on towards the other room. <laughs> As we're going, I'm like, I, th I think it flame be with you. And I keep walking. I just walk. Pushing open the doors to the church itself. Um, there is a large mosaic floor um, surrounded by a pillared stone hallway. Incidentally, the inner sanctuary uh, and the the overall church um, has the same structure of any church of the sacred fire that you would see but incidentally here this hallway is completely enclosed it seems as if the actual um, rather than being a direct just one room building there are other rooms lining around because you can see that there are four doors coming off the main chamber um, and there are no windows in this hallway. Instead, there are the chimneys uh, overhead of the arch ceiling and several skylights cut in, into above with panes of glass overhead. There is a great uh, altar, a basin of flame of the sacred fire, the flame burning brightly, uh, over which are uh, bas relief uh, carvings depicting various saints of the sacred fire. Um, and the um, the adornments of this church have not changed much uh, aside from the symbology of the flame, uh, which is normally just the, the burning flame in a brazier. Those symbols have all been taken down and replaced with a symbol of a falling comet. Hmm. 
some new decorations in here. This, isn't this something that River had mentioned was happening? More people joining a falling fire instead of the sacred flame? They sound pretty similar. One or the other. Maybe we can figure out what side this one's on. It seems hmm. to me that they might be two sides of the same coin. Um, knelt before the, the fire um, is a rather um, rather lithe and cultish woman. She stands up quite suddenly, like her movements are very fast. And she turns around and she smiles uh, as you enter. She is, um, as before, she has the uh, similar vestments of a flame keeper, but they have been, it's clear that her vestments have been dyed to add the black coloring that um, you have heard is typical of um, those who have converted to the, the falling fire. Um, she stands and, uh, and addresses you and says, Greetings. My name is Dana. I was Flamekeeper here, but now I tend the Falling Fire instead. How may I help you? Greetings, Dana. We are looking for a man, a human wizard named Linus. Do you know him? Linus. Yes. I do know of one person who may go by that name. To the south of town, there is a man who goes by Mr. Rams. And I believe it heard, it, that I've heard his first name is Linus. He is rather strange. He does not come here to worship. Do you have a lot of worshippers in the current times? Less than we used to, regrettably, but I am sure that in time they will see the new truth before them. We have been, a great revelation has been shared with us that of the falling fire. Lucretia Matthias is showing us a new pathway of light, and it has taken many time to understand the new future and fortune of how the flame will guide us. But we have been blessed here. Many are seeing the new way. There are still some that cling to the old doctrine they are willing to open their doors to the Illyrians and the ways of the Hierarch. But those ways are the old ways. Who in particular around here has been opening their doors to Illyrians? Well, the a group of Illyrian paladins came through here a while and they stayed at the warped wheel when I sent them away. Hmm. A few others who have not seen the new ways of that they themselves could not be convinced of the new truth of the falling fire, which I can tell you of if you do not know. Well, really, we've got other pressing matters. Maybe, maybe another time. Do you have a short version? Maybe a pamphlet. Certainly. She produces a copy of the Testament of the Falling Fire. She says, From the pen of Lucretia Matthias herself, all the objections to the rule of the Hierarch of Lumen, the truth of the Sacred Fire is in the Falling Flame. 
all is revealed herein. Is the falling flame when you when you refer to it? Is it is it a similar fire to that of the sacred flame? What makes it a falling fire instead of a sacred fire? Lucretia Matthias teaches us that that great meteor that befell the city of Drakenheim is a symbol of a grand age of heroes, a return of the falling fire. The meteor, the, the falling star that hit Drakenheim. Yes, indeed. That's... It is an omen of the sacred fire itself, a symbol of it, its return to our world and a new hope and new dawn. I'll give this a read and look into uh, what you're saying. I've heard this Lucretia Matthias name a few times already today. She's the, the leader of this um, new religion. Yes, though, I don't think she would claim such a wonderful title. Of course not. She has only been our guide. I hope one day to make the pilgrimage myself to Drakenheim and meet her. Well, I'm sure it will be a lovely place to visit. Wrath is uh, zoned out and he just walks away, kind of like checking the area. He's not interested in this. <laughs> I mean, this. Uh, this blasphemy, this divine magic. It seems important that we figure out what the new folk who are following this falling fire are up yes, to. Yes, yes. It's just, it's all very... I don't know if it has anything to do with what's going on in this town, though. No, but I'm taking this book anyway because there's a fine line between uh, fanatics and new religions, and it'll be important to know where they fall. Oh. Pun intended. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am, for helping us figure out that Rams is uh, probably the man we need to see. But uh, if we have any more questions, we'd appreciate if uh, we could stop by. Certainly. Absolutely. If you find the others of the town not hospitable, certainly you are welcome to stay here if you need lodgings well, thank you very much um we we have lodgings but it's good to know if the the winds change that we may have another ally in the the town thank you uh and is it is it f still flame be with you i don't know what the the greeting is old phrases die hard the flame will be with you flame will be with you and I back away. Yes, flame be, be with... Mm. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's head to... Uh, old Rams. Old Rams or the, the... The inn. I mean, we came here for Linus. I agree. We, we should make contact with him at once. If All he right. is our contact, I'm sure he's the best person to give us information on what has been going on in this town. Everything still seems a little curious. Perhaps it's just the Illyrians and the falling fire and sounds like they're at odds. So perhaps the town's just under a lot of pressure with uh, religious sects being kind of integrated. Button so, heads. Yes, so it would seem. Although something just doesn't feel right here and I'm hoping Linus might be able to shine some light on the situation. We should get to him as soon as possible. Absolutely. Right, I'll race you. Then I start to jog. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to complete the loop? Yeah. Okay. So you pass by the ruins of the Shining Shovel. As you do so, the blacksmith is back hammering yet again, and he eyes you somberly as you pass by. I speed up a little Keep bit. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Go. Don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Let's get out of here. I'm just going for an <laughs> evening jog. <laughs> Heading a little bit to the south, into a copse of tall trees. We've been told the residence of this Mr. Rams is you travel back around down this dusty dirt road and 
as the trail winds around the elms, the bushes part into um, a small ramshackle cottage on the south side of town. It's a familiar sight. Does this look like the normal lodgings for a powerful wizard? Um, he may be uh, keeping low. Uh, I do not know the circumstances of his arrangement here. My hope is that he'll be able to reveal more about the investigation into delirium. Yes. Let's go knock on his door. Let's go say hi. And I loud knock. Hello, sir. The door opens up and a wizened, ancient looking man opens the door. He has a wispy long beard going down to his knees and a droopy mustache. And he's wearing a skull cap. So you can't tell whether he's bald or not. And he has this long hook like nose uh, and this, these spectacles that are almost an inch thick. His robes are purple um, and running around and scurrying through his robes appears to be some kind of weasel or ferret. (laughs) This is absolutely the person we were looking for. And he says, can I help you? Linus. That's me. Uh, River sent us. Oh, Come in, come in. Sit down. (laughs) Well, don't you look like a man just full of knowledge of the world? Oh, yes. No. Uh, um, At the sight of the owl and the cat, the ferret in <laughs> in his robes goes wild. He's like, oh, Whiskers, you just calm down now. Get down, get down. Oh, you have a seat. And he's, he's shaking all, all the way through. Now, uh, now don't can you worry. I fetch you some tea? Tea would be lovely, sir. Do you need any help fetching it? Oh, no, it's all right. <laughs> now you're- and he goes and he's sh- his hands are shaking <laughs> as he's trying to pour the tea. And I'm like, your little uh, rodent shouldn't worry no more. Houdini is very well trained not to eat anything I don't tell him to. It's good that you're all finally here. It's been a real tough time managing out here on my own, as you can imagine. I'm not quite the spry young'un I used to be. That's Uh, painfully obvious. (laughs) (laughs) River told us that um, we were to come here and find you. She said that uh, that was it was it was it Linus that was missing? Or were we to talk to Linus? Talk to Linus. Who was missing? someone missing? Well, <laughs> you see, one of my rules, write it down, and what I wrote down is Shaftburn, River's friend is missing. Investigate. Linus. <laughs> well, that solves oh, that one. <laughs> well, you, you see, it's probably because I'd been meaning to get back in touch with River ever since, but the problem, of course, is that they've stolen all my spell components and I can't leave my house or they'll get me. Who's Who? they? Who? <laughs> them. Uh-oh. Who's them? <laughs> them Uh-oh. folk here in this town. They came... And they've slowly been stealing them from me, I swear it. I came to town with three of my spellbooks, extra wands, an orb of delirium, and a staff. And now, it's all gone. I can't send a message up for trying. And you saw them do it? No. They took my good pair of glasses... 
And I can't see but my hand in front of my face. Well, how do you know they did it? Who else <laughs> but them? Let's say them is responsible. Mr. Linus. Would you describe some of your lost possessions? And I'm going to entertain him. I'm going to take it seriously for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and, and start writing down. Not but three of my spell books. My wands... And an orb of delirium bestowed upon me. Only thing I've left are my academy rings. And he holds up his five ring ten. But you don't have any of those. Yeah, do I have any academy rings? Um, uh, you, uh, you are on your work placement. <laughs> then you will be awarded your rings. Oh. I'll get my rings You're one day. You're getting there. Yeah, it's got a. You are a member of the Amethyst Academy, right? Uh, yes. Now, sir, what oh. would these nice, simple town folk have in mind for stealing all your magical things? Uh, I wondered that too. I wonder why they just didn't come and kill me. But then I knew. You see, they know that if I'm dead, they will come looking for what happened. But, but if I'm not dead, then they won't send the any real members of the Academy. They'll send people like you. And now that you've come here to me, they'll know who you are. And they'll be watching us all. Well, I mean, we weren't quite quiet about <laughs> who we were looking for. <laughs> we did about for. three laps of town. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, at this point, I'm pretty sure everybody in town knows that we're here and that we are investigating uh, into you. So it's no secret. Now, how how have they all gone missing at once? Or was it over time that you're missing all your, your doodads and widgets? Oh, three nights. It came. I'd been going down and checking things out at that goose and goblin. Uh, we stopped by there. And I think they drugged me. They drugged you? Well, it's a good thing I didn't enjoy their food or drink. Did you drink their coffee? Ale? Awful. Awful coffee. Awful. Sin against nature itself. Was it true? Was it the coffee the only thing you had? I've had a few spirits down there, but you see, it's quite strange. You see, I grew up here myself, used to be from here. All the same folk always here. But now they're all acting so strange. Used to be a friendly town, this place. Prosperous town. But times have changed. We've been hearing about them going up in this fallen fire. You heard anything about it? I have. Don't know what to make of it. You've seen some years of spell casting and magic, I assume. Is it that something strange is going on in town? Or is it that something strange has happened to the people in this town? Do you, do you assume it's just them on edge from the Illyrians? Or do you possibly think there is magic afoot? That's... At first I thought they were all on edge. But something was getting to them. Linus, if I may ask, what made you go to the Goose and Goblin in the first place? It used to be a fine establishment. But I used to go to the Shining Shovel. Then it burned down. Were you here for that? I was in town, but I was asleep. Were there any witnesses? There were plenty of people that say they saw the fire. The blacksmith, the carpenter. 
You've been around by that blacksmith? Yes. Yeah. It was unpleasant. Weird fellow, isn't he? How recent was All he All of them rounded are like that. Any thoughts of the elves that moved in recently? Now that's a curious thing too, ain't it? They don't talk to me much. I worry that they might be behind it all. Now, there were some Illyrians that came by not too long ago. Did you get into any altercations with them either? I just tried to avoid them. Did they know of you? I certainly hope not. You know how Illyrians go around causing trouble. Mm. The city's close by. Something went on in that Shine and shovel. I know it. River had also mentioned a, a care package. Is that coming from Linus or from the <laughs> next town? Because it doesn't seem like we're getting any sort of care packages or uh, preferred rates at the stores here. Now, I got a few potions left. Kept them in a lockbox down under here. So if they are of some use to you, you can have them. Uh, they would be of great use to us. I ain't no. much good in the field anymore. Used up most of my spells, too. Got not much too left to do any casting with. But if you got something, be a real help. What do you? What are you looking for, casting-wise? What do you need? I don't know much about. Mm. Magics. Ingredients. Well, if you could get me my staff and my ore back, then I'd be in no problem. Any idea where we might start to look for that? You think that, uh, so far I've heard that it, it, it might be the people in the uh, goblin and the goose and goblin, but it might also be the elves. Uh, indeed. They uh, might all be in league with each other. All working together, causing I, up some sort of fuss. I'm starting to formulate a plan. I would like to hear your plan. I am starting to formulate <laughs> some ideas as well. Well, we may find what we're looking for in the Shining Shovel. However, I could... Maybe Linus takes another trip to the Goblin and the Goose uh, and... Are you using him as bait? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? No. Bait and switch? No, he's going to be the bait. I could yeah. go as Linus. Oh, you go as Linus. And see if, uh, if I get a warm welcome. And oh. maybe we could investigate the... I did mention that there was three men upstairs. I didn't see into the rooms, but maybe they have something to do with the disappearing items of our comrade Linus. Now, should we make some haste and get back to the uh, shine and shovel while the daylight's still fresh, or do you think we gotta wait till tomorrow morning for that? I would also be... How how long ago did the elves move in, Linus? Four months. Four months. Four months. When did you lose your possessions? Last I had of them was about a month ago. Hmm. Last time I talked to River, used a standing spell and let her know that I was not sure about how things were going here. Then after that, all my things were gone. And I'm too old to travel on my own. Where do you usually keep said possessions? Well, I used to keep them on me. And it was around that time that I'd thought, hmm, keep an eye on things over at the Goose and Goblin. And I woke up the next day in my bed, and all my things were gone. Hmm. Think the Goose and Goblin first? Maybe, uh, maybe after a little trip to Shining Shovel. Let's do it. And if we can get it done before nightfall, then we still have time to meet. Let's get over there. Mm -hmm. 
If we, we uh, maybe we may leave them to the last. If Linus suspicion is correct, then uh, now Linus, well. do you have a shovel? <laughs> <laughs> you never know what kind of tools you'll need when digging around in the rubble. I have a hammer. <laughs> we're, we're I think I've got an old one round back. Hammer. Watch me. <laughs> yeah, he can provide you with that. Cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. And you said the healing potions could come in handy. He offers you each two potions of healing. What? It's all I got left. It's all right. Beautiful. All right. So let's head to the shiny shovel. Let's get over there. Before we lose the light. I'll race ya. <laughs> now, I think we Maybe actually we gained a lot from him there. He had a, a lot of rumors. He might be a little mad, but <laughs> th- I do believe that he might be on to something. Rule number seven, follow a rumor. Never give it value until you can prove it's fact. All right, we won't go making any accusations to any of the townsfolk until we figure out what's going on here and at the shovel and goblin. Did I <laughs> make the names? Did I find any way to contact River? Do I have any way of? Unless you know the sending spell, I do not. Were we supposed to be able to? I guess he, he was able to send. Yeah, yeah. He's going to. We're going to so get him back. His our telephone line is cut. <laughs> until. Uh, so I suppose we're just stranded in this town until we can figure out what's going on. We have no way of contacting River. And I mean. That's, that's, that's why we should uh, investigate quickly. Now, is there a. Um, when we get to the shovel, is there a back entrance that we can use? I don't want to disturb that. Mean old blacksmith. Maybe we can wait till dusk. Uh, we are the dusk wardens. <laughs> it's only appropriate. And under the cover of some night, a little bit of night. Later in the evening, <laughs> before night falls, the blacksmith does stop. It uh, closes up the forge. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it is around supper time that he's done working uh, and shuts himself up in his home. All right, let's head we in. We take let's this go. opportunity to sneak in to the ruins of the inn. As much as we can. Mm-hmm. I'll okay. just point to my armor. How are you guys going to go about that? No guarantees. Let's go around back. I say go through a window. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you go around back. There is a kitchen door leading around the back, um, which is broken off of its hinges. Is there room enough to slink in, or will we have to remove the... The door is broken off, and just you can walk in. There's, It's an open hole. I walk in. <laughs> <laughs> I that was easy. sneak in. <laughs> I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm keeping my eyes open. Okay. Checking around. Give me a perception check. Do, do, do. Bruce, are you on? Are you looking out? Uh, 21. There's tracks in the muddy path leading up to this door and muddy footprints leading along the kitchen floor. Fresh? Like, is the mud wet or dry? The mud has started to dry, but it's re- but they're reasonably fresh tracks. I do one of these. I stop. And I then pull my axes out. In your heads, we should proceed cautiously. The feet are wide. Barefoot. Oh, that's a problem. But twice the size of a human's foot, and almost like the toes might be fused together? Does it resemble at all Horace's feet? No. They, looking at them closer, it's almost like there's just three big toes instead of you ever hunted anything that looks like this? I mean, I've I've done some hunting in my days. Uh, let me take a closer look at them. Can I can I make any determination on what sort of creature this may be? Uh, make an investigation check. Do, are you trained in nature? Um, I'm trained in history and investigation, but not nature. Okay, you can make an investigation check, but without specific training in biology, might be a little bit difficult to determine. I got a 15. This is definitely not a human footprint. 
The three toes kind of gave it away <laughs> that it, it probably isn't human. A creature of some sort. We should yes. be on our, our guard. <laughs> should we follow the footprints? The only thing that you can tell is that the alternation... This is something that can walk on two legs, but oftentimes uses its forelimbs, which have a similar profile to its feet, to walk as well. Like it might hunch over and, and alternate between walking on on its hands and feet, and its feet, and its its hands themselves might be almost foot like as well. So we have a creature who's been coming in here. We have a fire that nobody seems to know why it was caused. We have townsfolk acting strange. We have the Illyrians have just come through here recently. Somebody has stolen Linus's things. And elves have moved into town recently. And all of that, I can't quite put together yet. But do we hunt this creature? Yes. Well, can we see... Do the footprints lead... Out as well. Yes, both. Oh, that's something's been here. Might not be here, but it might be here as well. Proceed with caution. I'm going to follow these footprints and see where in this location they go. I'll, I'll be right behind you. Mm. I, I, I sneak along uh, quiet as quietly as possible following. The footprints lead in through the kitchen to the storeroom where there is a cellar door over which um, the cellar door, like there's rubble and wreckage all throughout. The roof has collapsed in places, but the rubble has been cleared off of the cellar door and the, and the cellar door is closed. Let's is it locked it. or just closed? Not from the outside. If it's lit, like you would expect there to be a lock and a latch on the top of the cellar door, right? So that people could close it, but the lock is... There's no sign of the... There's there's like the loop that you'd attach a lock to, but there's no lock on it. I, I slowly open the door, trying to like make sure it doesn't creak too much. And I'm ready okay. with my axes as he does. Make a cell check. 21. Okay. You gently open the cellar. It does make a sound as you do so, despite the rusting metal. The dusk, there's, there's just the, enough light that it pours down below. I oh. take a couple steps down quietly. Okay, there's a ladder leading down. Oh. How far down is it? About 12 feet. I could jump it. I'd rather not make very much noise in case something is down there, but... I'm going to need eyes. I, mean, I uh, Houdini down, but the last time that happened, I, uh, he got a face full of fire. Hold me. It takes a moment, but a wafting odor fills up. It's different, but there's a hint of that similar odor that you smelt around Horus and the Herlick farm. It has more of a sulfuric tone to it. Rule number 19, follow your nose. I don't want to follow my nose down no, there. But it is a clue. This smells similar to Horace's cavern. Yeah. Should we... Should I send Houdini down again? Take a look? Uh, I can send... Uh, Bruce look, wishes to scout ahead. All right. And so I'm going to become Bruce's eyes. And he's going to kind of flutter down and and into the uh, into the basement. Okay, so Bru you're going to go into Bruce's eyes and he's going to flutter down. Mm -hmm. Okay. As Bruce... Does Bruce have dark vision? Uh, yes. Okay. Bruce flies down. Make a perception check for Bruce. Uh, 23. Okay. Bruce sees this. In the darkness of one of the corners, there is a hulking, hunched-over creature. 
its skin is a turquoise green and it ripples through with muscle and scales its face has barbs coming off of it in a wicked grin and it is hunched over perched onto its uh, four limbs um, almost like a gorilla or an ape it smiles wickedly and hisses um, as Bruce enters the room and it lifts up a stone axe and moves to throw it you can roll for initiative ah Bruce <laughs> don't you hurt him don't you hurt him. Oh my goodness. You want to move this? Right on top. I guess we're not down there yet. Just Bruce is. Just no, just Bruce. Just okay, Bruce flying around. What? What? Uh, what do we got for initiative? Seven. Uh, seven for Rudy. Yeah. Twenty-two. Okay. And seven. <laughs> want to go first, or you want me? To? Uh, Rudy's choice. You go. Okay. Okay. So Rudy's going to go first. Yes. And then uh, Rudy's going to go right, before right. Wrath. Yeah. yeah. That's the idea. Okay. Okay. So Wilhelm. Um, I, I, a meow comes up from, from below as there's a moment of realization that something is down. Uh, something is down there. You hear the growling coming from below. Um, and are able to, um, but uh, I'm going to rule that because of the, the circumstances, you and Rudy are surprised, basically, because you weren't both down there. Mm-hmm. Um, Bruce and you are not surprised, but this creature is acting before your initiative. Okay. It races out of the shadow towards Bruce, mm-hmm. um, and... As you do so, you can see that there are three of them total. Uh-oh. Uh, two more forms come out from below. Um, and it raises uh, up its hand to smash into um, into Bruce. Bruce! Getting a critical hit. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce just pops <laughs> oh, out of Bruce. into... Uh, um, like a void, like a like a blacky void. Okay. Um. Okay. So, with that wrath, it is your turn. Uh, I kind of snap out of it, mm-hmm. and I go, "There's something down there." <laughs> <laughs> well, what? Uh, it looks like a monster. monster. We could. And I, I motion to like just close the door. <laughs> like, are we not gonna take it on? <laughs> um, I for one can't stand for monsters roaming around here. <laughs> uh, I guess this is what we have to. Can I see it from the top of this the ladder? Uh, from the top of the ladder, no. You would need to come down and have a clear view to it. Uh, I'm going to stand at the door and if it tries to come up i'm going to slam the door uh on it and that's what i'm gonna use my okay wilhelm you are first to a- you are back up to you peering down into the darkness i can't make out like i saw bruce go down but i didn't see what yes happened. but from the vantage point of the trap door up you don't have a clear line of sight. The light cu- spilling through the rooftop 
illuminates the floor. So there is a little bit of shadowy illumination down there. But um, whatever creature got Bruce, you can't see it from up here. There's three of them, Wilhelm. And there's three of us. <laughs> Sounds like each. berries to me. And I, I grab the edge of the ladder and kind of swing just a few steps down the ladder. Okay. And peer into the... You see the horrendous creature just barely illuminated by the light. I leap off the ladder, pulling my rapier out in the air and come down on the beast. Okay. As you do so, a wall of this acrid stench hits you. Um, you will need to make a saving throw at the, if you start your turn uh, there. Okay. Yep. So as I come down, I get hit with this wall of stench, and I take my rapier out and try to drive it into the neck of the beast. Um, yeah. 24. That is a hit. And since there are no other creatures, I'm going to use my sneak attack. Uh, that will be 20 damage. Wow. Nice shot. And then I kind of kick off of the beast back up to the corner. And I'm actually, um, yeah, I back up to the corner and fire my crossbow at him. Okay. Uh, getting a well over 20. Also a hit. Doing another 10 damage. Nice. It is still kicking, but severely wounded and bloodied. As the blood oozes from its wounds, is there anything else you want to do? Um, I move over to these kind of crates and boxes and try to get myself into an advantageous position. Okay. I have the high ground. Uh, as you do so, the creature screams out with a wounded fury and it races towards you. Um, pulling back its claws and smashing into you with the full force of its brute strength. Uh, it gets a 24 and a 12 to hit. One of them hits. Okay. In its wounded fury, it smashes into you with unparalleled strength, dealing 15 points of slashing damage as Ow. its claws dig deep into your flesh. Then the other two emerge from the shadows. Um, I'm going to use my ability on that uncanny dodge. Okay. To half that. The other two emerge from the shadows. Uh, their speed is 30 feet, so can they get up to you? Not quite. Okay. Hold on from this guy. Okay. In that case, they're going to dash to completely surround you. <laughs> I've made an error in judgment. <laughs> Smashing past the boxes and, and encircling you in, in the corner. Uh, Rudy, you're up. All right. I hear <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm coming, Wilhelm. And I slide down the ladder. Okay. Axe is ready. And I come charging in towards the the one I can see that's bloodied already. And I just start hacking away at him. Nice. And uh, Houdini um, starts kind of flying around, but like pulling at him to get his attention. Uh, and we're going to first hit Crit. Oh, man. Here we go. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, 13 damage. Um. What happens? I chop off his head. <laughs> <laughs> As he snarls out in a rage, you just come up right behind him and lop this creature's head off in a single single strike. Nice. Right, I take my second attack. Oh. Uh, 13. That is a hit. Oh. All right. Eight damage. Nice. Um... Cleaving off the first one's head, 
You bring the axe smashing into the second. Now, action surge is not a bonus action, right? Uh, action surge would let you make two extra attacks. You haven't used your bonus action at all. Okay. Yet. And then I, again, uh, dual wielding, hit again. Oh, that's a critical miss. Okay. Um, I'm thrown off by the smell. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, and I action surge to get two more. Go. Two more. Crack it. There it is. is <laughs> Wreck it. Uh, 20 damage. There you go. Okay, that leaves him bloodied. Uh, 18. That is a hit. Five damage. Okay, very Between wounded. five and 20 damage. Just you come in with this flurry of action cleaving into them. Um, sending their bile-like blood splattering aclo- across the room. I gag uh, a little bit. <laughs> Wrath, you're up. Uh, watching my comrades dive in, uh, <laughs> I follow suit. Okay. Part of me uh, doesn't know what to do without the leadership of Bruce, um, but I think I'll find a way. And I take my first shot at the... Uh, I climb down the ladder, and I take my first shot at the one on the... That, that Rudy's been uh, working on, uh, getting a, like a 22 to hit. That is a hit. For um, 20 damage. <laughs> How did it do? Did you t- shoot it twice? Uh, oh, sorry. I didn't hex it. Uh, I meant to hex it. Oh, you, okay. I okay. apologize. Okay. Uh, can I use my bonus action to yes. hex it? Yeah, then I do. Then it's 20, 20 damage. damage. So that's max damage. Is that max damage? Basically, oh. it's one okay. off. Uh, <laughs> it is blown to smithereens and destroyed. I explode it and then <laughs> I turn to its my face. Uh, to its friend. Um, yeah, I can't believe. Yeah, I forgot hex. But then I I shoot his friend. Oh, <laughs> for uh, eighteen damage <laughs> <laughs> for a twenty-two to hit. Yeah, uh, but you can't add the hex to that because you applied it to the first. Oh one. yeah, true, move, true. Yeah. Sorry, uh, fourteen. Fourteen damage. Okay. Hot dice. Hot dice. Hot dice in the city. Coming in with a blast of power at the rage of losing Bruce. Ah! I need my cat. (laughs) Where's my cat? Has anyone seen my cat? (laughs) Okay. We go to the top of the round with Wilhelm. Wilhelm. (laughs) uh, Seeing the beast turn around to face Wrath, I drive my blade into the back of its neck. Uh, Getting a 18 to hit. As a hit. And I'm going to use my sneak attack on that as well. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Nope. Fifteen more damage. You run it through, right through the neck. I, I stab like it through rock. the neck and just pull it out as it slumps over dead. And I look at you two and I go, "You see, <laughs> <laughs> I drew their attention." And we all knock them down. Three against three, always good odds. We each got one of these guys. I fall to my knees and scream. Bruce! Bruce! Can't you just- Is that the ritual to summon Bruce? It just consists of an hour of screaming on your knees. <laughs> I start to paint circles on the ground and I, I start uh, chanting. I start to- Bruce! Bruce! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm like kind of like making sound and, and like, I'm making scratching sounds on the ground like you've left your cat out late too late at night and you have to like you go out you open the door and you're screaming into the street <laughs> shaking trees so the next hour shaking and ten treats. minutes I'm just sitting there kneeling in this uh, basement <laughs> the material component is cat treats <laughs> shake the bag uh, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> shake I imagine Bruce. Bruce, when you summon him back, he doesn't even like. He doesn't even just appear. He just wanders in, like you were shaking. Like he yeah. just wanders into the room, and it's just like, oh, there you are. And it's almost always on the dot at an hour and ten minutes. Like it's it's crazy how it takes it takes about an hour to. I I just think he's just coming back from like his uh, uh his place in the void. <laughs> Well, <laughs> while that happens, I investigate the basement, I guess. Well, I'm just walking around you as you're like, bro, bro. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I'm like in, looking in boxes and stuff. I'm checking out the creatures because I'm find, trying to figure out what they are. Um, <laughs> these things 
are like the a cross between a lizard and a gorilla. Mm. Ah, gorizards. <laughs> Classic. Do we see any signs of delirium? There is an octarine twinge to their blood. Yeah. It's like they've been affected by the delirium here. These probably were the people that own this place. Whoops. I, I come over. Is there anything remotely human about them? Aside from their vaguely bipedal form, their monstrous faces bear no trace of humanity. I mean, it's hard to say that these were the people that owned this place. I mean, earlier we thought bird spine things that shot spines at us. They could have just been, they could be anything that has been touched by delirium. It there seems. is a bit of a nest that they seem to be creating some sort of burrow or hide they've created and as you look around in the, the hide um, there is a small crate with a sack um, and inside is about 150 gold pieces and several um, several talents of silver and several large gemstones. Probably the, the talents of silver and the gemstones probably are worth at least 500 gold pieces altogether. Like including the gold? Mm -hmm. The others, uh, other things amongst them, amongst like the, there's the gold that's worth about 150, and then the silver talents, the gemstones. Many of the gemstones look like they've been pried out of jewelry, and there's p pieces of jewelry as well, and other bits of fine clothing and silks that have all been stuffed into this the sack. As I'm looking around, are there any um, other... St does it look like these were stolen from around town, and are there other goods stolen, or is this just a random assortment of jewels? It's jewels, some bits of clothing, bits of gold and, co and coinage that have all been collected together in a tied sack. But no signs of uh, like material components or the orb or... No. Well... These gems had to belong to somebody. If if they belong to somebody in town, we should return them. Otherwise, I'd say great bounty for a job well done. We worked hard for this. We deserve to get paid. I got scratched in the arm. It, That's worth at least 50 gold. I, I agree. It's I worth need, the work. Could use, could use a little. I'll be honest. I'm going to take some of this gold. You're right. The gems could belong to someone. Well. But I, how are we going to know whose gold it is? This still doesn't solve our mystery of what's happening in town. As a matter of fact, this just raises more questions. What were these creatures, and why were they building a nest down here? The questions just keep piling up, and I think it's time we go and meet our friends, the elves, and see what they know. You're right. We'll have to find out next week. Ah! <laughs> I took, that is I where we're on for the night. I took 50 gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how much? So, how much should we write down in total? I took, do you want I did fifty, and then I can keep the gems for now. Do you want to just like write down how much it was all worth? And yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how much was it all? It was a sack. Uh, of 500, 500 uh, gold pieces worth of gems, jewelry, and bits of fine clothing. All right. Amazing. Down. Yeah, I'll yep. keep it. I'll keep track. Okay. Sure. So that's where we're going to wrap up for the night. Um, a big thank you, as always, to our amazing cast, okay. Jill, Kelly, and Joe for playing. And a huge thank you as well this evening to the incredible Kirsten Yay! standing in for Kyle. Um, Kirsten is super awesome. Uh, if, you, if you don't know, she also provides the amazing voice in our introduction, in our new introduction yeah. video. Uh, and is the amazing one, uh, making sure we are all well fed uh, in between uh, our game sessions. So she has hopped in uh, to be manage chat and the stream this evening and done a fantastic job. So thank you, Kirsten. And also a huge thank you to our dungeon master, Monty Martin, Yay! for running an incredible game. And uh, as always, uh, shout out to Tabletop Audio. You've been listening to them. You've been hearing it along with Kirsten's voice during our intro. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a free service. It's all available for you at tabletopaudio.com. Go check it out. They're great. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts, 
uh, on our merch store, including some new ones like Clunk Clunk, Way Bigger Than Ducks, and The Dusk Wardens. <laughs> Don't forget to take a look at those at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes Merch. If you are enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, please consider checking us out on Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash Dungeon Dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community. So if you are one of our patrons, you can join us on Discord. It's exclusive to our patrons. But you can come and hang out with all of us, chat with us about Drakenheim, D&D, or anything that you feel like talking about. We're always in there hanging around, and we love chatting with you guys. So join us there. Of course, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for Dungeon Masters and guides for players. Be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. That's at youtube.com slash dungeon dudes. No underscore in that one. Just straight up. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time in the shadows of Drakenheim. <laughs>